Hello, the first non-Mendelian inheritance pattern that we're going to discuss is sex linkage. Sex linkage occurs whenever we have a gene that is on a sex chromosome. So in humans, we know that females have two copies of an X chromosome. And then in males, we have one copy of an X chromosome and then we have a Y chromosome. Um, there are other chromosomes in other organisms like Z's and W's, um, but the only one that you really need to know and have memorized is human sex determination. And if they give you other organisms with different chromosomal inheritance patterns, um, they will always describe how that sex determination works in the prompt. So another thing that you need to know is that the X chromosome is much, much, much larger than the Y chromosome. So if we look at the X chromosome, it's very long and it has something like 500 different genes on that X chromosome. In contrast, the X, or I'm sorry, the Y chromosome that I'm going to do in blue is much, much, much shorter. And that one will have about 55 genes. So it's not important that you memorize um, how many genes are on the X and the Y chromosome, but it is important that you know that there are a lot of genes that are on the X chromosome that are not found on the Y chromosome. Because of that, we will say that human females, they can be homozygous or heterozygous for traits that are on the X chromosome. However, males on the other hand are often hemizygous. Hemi meaning that they have one copy of a gene because males will only have one X chromosome. So these hundreds of genes that are missing on that Y chromosome, males only have one copy of those. So the other thing that I want to make sure that you guys know is that there are, there is one very important gene that is found on the Y chromosome and I'm just coloring in its locus right now or its location on the Y chromosome and that is the SRY gene. And that SRY gene is very important in sex determination. That SRY gene um, creates genes. I'm sorry, it turns on genes. It like makes promotion factors. So it makes promoting genes. I'm going to say it pr promotes like testy formation. So we have some genes that their main job is to turn other genes on. This SRY gene creates proteins and their job is to turn on other genes that would lead to the formation of testes. If this gene is not present or if that gene is silent, then testes will not be formed and the default will be the formation of ovaries. So it is that SRY gene that is important for maleness. So now that we know the difference between X and Y chromosomes, we're going to look at some sex linked um, inheritance patterns um, and we're going to look at um, fruit flies. Fruit flies also have X and Y chromosomes. The X chromosome is much larger than the Y. So what we're going to look at is a gene for eye color and that locus for eye color is on the X chromosome and to say it's about here and that will be the locus for the gene for eye color in fruit flies and notice that there is not a comparison gene that is on the Y chromosome so it's only on the X chromosome so it is sex linked on the X. So we see that the gene for eye color is X linked. Wild type flies have red eyes. This is a new phrase right here, wild type. And we will only see that phrase wild type when we're talking about um, linked genes. So 
for us, wild type is going to mean something that is showing the dominant trait. So if you're wild type, that is showing the dominant trait, which is red eyes. The recessive mutant right here, that recessive trait of white eyes is recessive. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the phenotypic frequencies for eye color and sex in the F1 population when a true breeding red-eyed female is crossed with a white-eyed male. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine how we're going to denote um, sex linkage on um, when we figure out these problems. So we're going to make our key. Here's our X chromosome. Because it is sex linked, I'm going to make this determination be red eyes. So anything that is linked, we're not going to use just one letter anymore. We're going to use the, the sex chromosome that that gene is on, and then we're gonna use a superscript to show, to show the allele that is on that chromosome. So that is one possibility that you might see is a capital letter denoting the dominant trait of of red eyes. The other thing that you could have could have used and that you may see is we may have the X chromosome but then a plus and that plus means wild type or the dominant trait. So either one of these designations you will see either X plus for wild type or XR denoting the red eyes is dominant. Now when we get to the recessive allele. You may see a lowercase letter representing the recessive phenotype of white eyes, and that is appropriate. But the other thing that you may see is this X chromosome with this lowercase w representing the mutant. Either one of those is appropriate. So either we're going to stick with one letter here, the R's, and using capital and lowercase letters to denote dominant and recessive, or we're going to have pluses for the wild type, and then our letters are always going to represent a recessive mutant phenotype. You will see both of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use the, these pluses and Ws because they're the ones that we're most unfamiliar with when we solve this problem. So the first thing that we have, our stop is done, we have our key. Um, the next thing that we need to do is identify our cross. And the first thing that we have is a true breeding red-eyed female. So true breeding means that she is homozygous. She's showing the wild type phenotype of red eyes. So this would be her genotype. She is crossed with a white-eyed male. So I'm going to use this X with a superscript of the W and the Y and that is our cross. Those are our two organisms that we're crossing right there. Now when we're ready to determine our phenotypic frequencies, we're going to come here. I'm going to put the female at the top. We'll put the male on the side. And then what you'll notice here is that we are going to have females that are going to be heterozygous. And those females right here, these are going to display red eyes. Here are our males. Our males are hemizygous, meaning that they only have one allele for eye color, but they are also displaying red eyes as well. So if we're looking at phenotypic frequencies, all of my offspring, or 100%, are going to have red eyes. All of my females, 100% of our females, are going to have red eyes. 100% of our males are going to have red eyes. If I'm looking for sex and eye color, I would say that 50%, or one half, of the offspring will be females with red eyes. 
and the other 50% will be males with red eyes if I'm looking at sex and the gene for eye color at the same time.